My name is Emily Weber, Machine Learning Specialist at Amazon Web Services, and today we're going to talk about experiments. This is your deep dive. So you might be thinking to yourself, my gosh, there are so many steps that are involved in this process here, and I actually have a lot of different models. How do I manage all of my projects and their histories? And the answer here is Amazon SageMaker Experiments. So Amazon SageMaker Experiments has three steps that we need to know about. It's a, it's a hierarchical process such that first you're going to start with an experiment. Um, that's going to need a name, right? So you'll have an experiment name. But that experiment name can refer to a lot of different things, right? You can uh, name a set of data that you're analyzing, say. And so let's say you're interested in developing um, vaccines or you're interested in producing forecasts. Uh, what you might want to do is develop an experiment name um, for that entire project, right? And then uh, within that that entire project you can have trials and then each trial is roughly going to refer to a training job. Um, so a trial is going to be one attempt at that experiment uh, and then a trial component is going to be a part of that trial. So a trial component could include a SageMaker processing job, um, it could include your data, Right? And then essentially um, multiple trial components will constitute what's called a trial um, and then multiple trials co constitute an experiment. And so uh, you can, as of today, manage your experiments uh, using SageMaker. So we're going to be creating these via SDKs. So SageMaker Experiments has its own SDK that we're going to be leveraging. Uh, and then, of course, you can also drop into Boda 3 if that's helpful. Um, we're also going to see that SageMaker Experiments has a native component within SageMaker Studio. So that is to say, if you're comfortable using SageMaker Studio, uh, you can easily create and manage your experiments using the visual UI. Again, you don't need to do that. It is backwards compatible, so you can still leverage SageMaker Experiments if you're on notebook instances. It's just going to be a little bit nicer and have a couple more features, actually, if you're in Studio. Uh, you should know that all of your autopilot jobs will be automatically logged by experiments. So in Studio, every time you're running an autopilot job, that will be automatically picked up by experiments. And so oftentimes folks use autopilot as a way to learn about experiments, which is fine. Um, but just know that they are two separate features, actually. Uh, you, it's also good to know that all of the experiments that we're creating in Studio are automatically going to show up in that Studio Viz tab. So when you're in Studio via the SDK, if you create a new experiment, you are going to see that in the Experiments tab. Even if you don't explicitly put it there, just when you create it via that SDK, it will show up in the Experiments tab. And then the last piece we want to know is that all of the experiments in Studio come with graphics and visuals. So when you're running tr training jobs, when you're running processing jobs, you know, uh, running through multiple trials against your final experiment, um, you can absolutely visualize those, you can graph those, and you can analyze those. And then again, all of this is going to come with this pip install here. We're just going to want to pip install uh, SageMaker experiments. So this is what the visuals end up looking like, right? So in Studio, um, essentially we're going to open up this experiments tab right here. And then let's say that we ran through an AutoML or an AutoPilot job. Um, we're going to see this experiments listing right over here on the left hand side. We'll get this list of experiments. We're just going to highlight one of those and then again right click. And based on our right click, we can open in what's called the trial component list. And then the trial component list is going to show up over here on the right hand side. And so these are all of the trials and the trial components that are associated with this experiment. And so you can see they're all showing up right here. And now what we can do is highlight multiple trials and then we can open those in another view, open in trial details. And when we open in trial details, 
um, this is going to give us the ability to graph uh, multiple experiments, right? So we can take even just one experiment here uh, and then build a chart essentially where over here we've got our time. Um, up here we have our the loss on our test set and so that's going down which is a good thing. Um, and so we can modify this. We can add charts here um, on this gearbox up here. We can open it and change it. Uh, we have uh, lots of other you know ways of, of analyzing this and, and tracking our jobs. So let's jump in. So your SageMaker examples repository on GitHub uh, comes with examples for all of the new features, including SageMaker experiments. And so just to show you, obviously right now I'm in studio. Uh, so I get cloned SageMaker examples, and then there's the SageMaker experiments directory. And then here's this IPython notebook, and we're just walking through that right now. And so let's check this out. So this is an MNIST uh, project. So we're just going to get the handwritten digits and we'll try and classify them um, using a deep learning model. And so first we'll just import a couple things that we need to. Uh, this is the line right here. We're going to pip install. Oops, we're going to pip install the SageMaker experiments. And so that happens right here. Uh, in this case, we actually also needed to pip install the SageMaker SDK. So I encourage you to, to add that step. Uh, and then on we go. So we've got pandas, numpy, matplotlib, pytorch. So this is, we're expecting a pytorch model and that makes sense uh, because the kernel up here is a pytorch uh, CPU optimized uh, kernel running Python 3. And then we're gonna import SageMaker here uh, with our session and then a couple new things. Look at this. So sagemaker.analytics, we're gonna import experiment analytics and then from that SageMaker Experiments SDK, we're going to import from this experiment subdirectory uh, experiment. So we're going to be creating that. And then we've got a trial. We've got a trial component and a tracker. Let's keep cruising. Uh, so down here, we're going to grab our session through Boto3. And then we're also going to be setting up a client here. So we're pointing to SageMaker. Again, through Boto3 here. And then we're gonna grab our execution role from SageMaker. And now uh, we're just gonna create an S3 bucket. So I have already created this. So I got a little warning here that I was trying to recreate an existing bucket, but that's no problem. Uh, if you want to point to your own bucket, right? All you really need to do is just say bucket. Oops. And then you just want to make sure that that uh, is pointing to an S3 bucket that already exists. If it's already there, then just go ahead and comment this part out. If it's not there, then you'll want to actually create it. But mine's there, so I'll just leave that as is. Let's keep cruising here. Uh, so now we're going to download the MNIST uh, handwritten data set. And so this is coming uh, from this data sets. And I believe that data sets is coming from, yeah, that's from PyTorch. So that's hosted from PyTorch. So we're just going to grab it through there. So datasets.mnist, nice and easy. Training set, great. Uh, transform, okay, into tensors. We're going to normalize those and download, great. And then we've got a test set here, which we're not going to download, right? So this is not going to form an object on disk. It's just going to live in memory here. So there we go. So I got downloaded. Uh, and then, so here is one uh, visual. This is one handwritten digit for the number four. Uh, and essentially the, the game here, right, is that we're gonna try and build a model uh, that can read this handwritten digit and then classify that, actually produce the number four as an output of the neural network. And that's a classic machine learning problem. So we've got our SageMaker session here and we're establishing our inputs. So we're gonna upload our data uh, through this local path here, MNIST, and that's our spec. So it's uploaded actually to S3. So that's the upload to S3. And if we were um, adding this into a different bucket, we would just see our bucket name there. All right, now let's look at this. So with tracker.create, pre-processing. Okay, so we're gonna be running some processing jobs here. 
Mm, okay, so we're logging parameters. Uh, we're setting the normalization mean to this and the normalization standard deviation to this. No doubt this came after some, you know, guess and check, after some analysis, figuring out that those are the best two terms, but we'll, we'll, we'll track those. And then we're going to log the input. So this is a way to log pre-processing steps. All right. So now we're going to create the experiment. And what's good to know is that the experiment creation is actually really simple, right? If you look at this, it, it might look a little complicated, but let's let's break this down here because it's it's really not. Um, essentially, we're saying experiment, right? We imported that from that new SDK, SageMaker Experiments, and then dot create. And then we just have four arguments here. We're going to put in the name of our experiment, which remember this F is a fancy way of doing this. So we can just change this out. A little bit more updated Python code there. Okay, great. Uh, and we can modify this. So I'll just change this to say my experiment. And then this is a helpful um, piece to add because what you'll find out is that your experiments um, need to have unique names. And so if you're recreating another experiment with the same name, it is going to error out. And so it's nice to have a you know quick versioning uh, solution here. You can just you know grab it based on based on the time. Um, you can also develop a sophisticated versioning you know system, say experiment 0 0.1, 0 0.2, and then 1.1, .1, etc. Um, but you can you can just figure that out based on what works best for you. And then you've got a description down here which is optional. Uh, and then we've got your client. And so that's your Bodo 3 client that we're passing in. And then that's just a print statement to show success here. And so this is showing, that's our experiment name, MNIST handwritten along with the timestamp. There's that description, experiments ARN. So there we go. So that was created for us, which is lovely response metadata. Great. Life is good. Let's keep going. All right. So now we're going to track the experiment. We're going to create a trial for each training run to track its inputs, its parameters, and its metrics. And we're going to experiment with several values for the number of hidden channels in the model. And in fact, we're going to create a trial to track each training job run. And for each trial, we're also going to create a trial component from the tracker that we created above. And then we're going to add that to the trial. And then this is going to enrich the trial with the parameters that we captured from the data pre-processing stage. So there we go. Uh, so we're going to grab uh, SageMaker.PyTorch because no doubt we're going to be creating a PyTorch estimator. And then here we go, hidden channel trial name map. So no doubt we're going to use the mapper. And then down here, uh, tracker.trial component, right? So these are the, the different trials, uh, different components of each trial rather. And then here's our loop. So again, don't don't be afraid of this loop here. It's just it's just a, a loop, not too bad. Just just one level. Uh, so okay, we're gonna walk through this list here. So we've got two, five, ten, twenty, and thirty-two, uh, and so those are the number of hidden channels that we're gonna be walking through. And then we also have this index space. So that's gonna be zero, one, two, three, and four. And so for each of these, we're creating a trial, and that trial has a base name that is, in this case, holding the number of hidden channels, which is going to come in through here. And then uh, that's also going to have a timestamp, again, to get over that, that unique problem. Then we're going to create this trial. So trial name is that. Experiment name is that. And so remember, we have a new trial for that larger experiment. And then uh, we're going to basically hold on to um, this trial name. So this mapper that we're creating is going to be hashing the, the number of the hidden channels, in this case two, to the trial name, which is right up here. 
And then we're going to add this trial component. So CNN, CNN dot underscore trial, which is right here, dot add trial component. So we're going to add the trial component with this pre-processing trial component. So that happens right here. Let's keep cruising. All right, so here's our estimator. So the, the estimator should look familiar to SageMaker developers. If you're familiar with this, you will be familiar with estimators. Uh, so we have a PyTorch estimator, which means that we're in script mode, right? Remember, we're bringing our own Python script here, and this is actually a PyTorch script um, that's defined in this mnist.py file. Uh, we've got our, our role. Got our SageMaker session, uh, framework version. So we're going to specify the version of Tensor, sorry, the version of PyTorch that we want to run on that training job. And remember, we're having a new um, training job spin up for each of these trials, actually. And then training instant count is one. Instance type, that's a C4XL. Hyperparameters. So two epochs. Nice and short job. Uh, the back end, hidden channels, dropout, and then an SGD. Metric definitions. Okay, so in this case, we're going to be defining um, basically actually the regex string. Um, so typically in SageMaker jobs, you'll see a lot of regexing on CloudWatch. Uh, and so in this case, we're going to regex through uh, the CloudWatch logs to pick up train loss, uh, average loss, and test accuracy. What this means is that you can bring your own, right? When you're bringing your own scripts, um, you can emit whatever losses make the most sense to you. Um, and then you'll just want to modify this regex string so that it matches that. Then enable SageMaker metrics, set that to true, CNN training job name right here, and then estimator.fit. Great. And so that's the number of inputs. That's our job name, or rather all of our inputs, job name, experiment config, and then a weight here. And so this weight is helpful because, again, we're in a for loop. And so in this case, we're, we're going through those iteratively. Um, something you can also do, actually, to, to go a little bit faster um, is run each of these jobs in parallel. So um, in some of our other examples, we show how to actually set up MapReduce on your uh, notebook instance um, in some cases. And so uh, what we can do is actually modify this content so that all of those jobs run at the same time um, rather than needing to wait for one job to run and then the next one. It can take a little bit of extra time to set up right because it's MapReduce, um, but in, in any case, it, it gets the job done. And so these are the logs for each of our models. So the first one ran for 92 seconds. Then we're going to start at the next one. And there we go. Go SageMaker, go. This is running. OK, so we've got lots of jobs here, which is excellent. Uh, and it looks like those just completed. So let's step through this. So we're going to run a search expression right here. And then we're going to set up this experiment analytics. So there we go. And then we're going to build an analytic table. And then let's look at this. So here we go. So these are all of the trials, along with the trial component name, some of the metrics here, and then the results. So it looks like this one had the highest test accuracy. And that was this this one, this model. All right, and there's more. Now we're going to set up a lineage table. So in this case, we're going to grab the best performing uh, results and then actually look at the lineage for this. So we can identify um, the pre-processing step. Remember where we specified the normalization mean and the standard deviation, uh, and then associated those to a training job. And to top this off, all of this is also uh, available in your, your uh, UI. So right over here, we've got this little experiment beaker. Let's open that up. And I'm going to cruise up here, and I'm going to hit refresh.
right? So that little uh, little circle up here. And what do you know? MNIST handwritten. Funny. Okay, we're going to give that a right click. Uh, and then let's open in trial component list. And there we go. It's magic. Uh, okay, so I'm going to close that out. And then I'm going to pick one of these. Right click. Two options here. Look at this. Deploy model if I want to just create an endpoint. Uh, or I'm going to say open in trial details. And here we go. And so this is where I'll spend a little bit of time to set up the graph. Um, over here, we've got some different options. We've got time, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Let's go for accuracy. And there we go. We've got our artifacts stored here. AWS settings, and there we go. Okay, so some pro tips for SageMaker experiments. Uh, so the first pro tip uh, is leveraging SageMaker experiments to track the work across your team, right? So if you've got team members and you want to understand how your team is progressing uh, day by day, trial by trial, I'd strongly encourage leveraging SageMaker experiments, right? You can use this to um, set up a tracking dashboard, essentially where you can understand um, how each team is progressing um, and then make sure that they're staying in line with your goals and that you're communicating uh, expectations appropriately. So, so definitely recommend team tracking. Um, another thing to keep in mind is uh, the experiment name, right? Remember, if you uh, use just one name, that's the I'm, I'm sorry, the, the, the moment you run an experiment, um, that name is going to be taken. Uh, so just make sure to, to actually use a different name um, every time you create a new experiment. And then the last thing to think about is processing jobs and trial components. So uh, in the case we saw with MNIST, um, we were actually adding pre-processing steps, and those steps were... Um, basically uh, facts that we were logging from our studio view. Um, but if you look at this in autopilot, um, we can actually track the pre-processing job. Um, so, so that's, you know, transforming features using SageMaker processing um, that we're going to talk about in a little bit here, um, and then associating that with a trial component. And so all of those are then put together, and then you can identify that as part of the lineage traceback. And so with that, thank you very much. Uh, my name is Emily Weber, machine learning specialist at AWS. Uh, happy, to, happy to help out, and I hope you have a great rest of your day. Thanks.